Hello, welcome to Late Night Creations. My name is Kendra and I'm really glad you're here. Today I'm participating in the Try It Tuesday Challenge. I was inspired by some incredible creators to try some new techniques. So let's get crafting. We are gonna start out with this little planter flower box that my mom gave me. It was someone had given her flowers and she was getting rid of it. We are gonna use this salt wash that I saw Sammy over at Unicorn Dust Designs use and I, she did an amazing job with it. I hope that I can make something just as pretty as she did. She is an amazing creator and she's the one that hosts this challenge. So you're supposed to mix equal parts paint and salt wash and then just put it on with a dabbing or stippling uh, motion so that you create texture. I thought it kind of started looking like concrete and I kind of was okay with that, but that really wasn't what I was going for. So I continued on with the next layer. You're supposed to do this. Well, if you do it like you want it to look like worn wood, you, you do a couple of layers and then you sand it, but we're not gonna sand this, this planter. So I did the dark gray elephant, I think it was elephant by um, Waverly. And this is just some white chalk paint and I'm just kind of dabbing and brushing and dabbing and brushing to get some texture. And then I'm taking sage green by Folk Art and giving it a pretty heavy coat across there. But I still wanna be able to see that white and the gray through. So it uh, resembles stone. And you're gonna see in the end that it turns out really pretty. And there you go. I styled it with some lavender and some eucalyptus and I think it looks beautiful. Okay, like I said, this is the Try It Tuesday Challenge hosted by Sammy at Unicorn Dust Designs. It's the last Tuesday of every month and we are supposed to create DIYs inspired by another creator or something we've seen on the internet or whatever. The uh, original creator's links will be in the description box as well as the entire playlist so you can get lots of inspiration of your own. Okay, next DIY is another piece of the swing set that blew over and fell apart in our backyard and we saved it and I've been DIYing with this wood for quite some time. So now I'm starting out with that um, elephant gray again, and I'm not giving it a full coat because I've, um, that we're gonna sand this down and want it to look worn. I probably should have given it a, a fuller, a heavier coat, a fuller coat, a heavier coat, but I still like the way it turned out. And now I'm using the white chalk paint and I have mixed that salt wash in both of these colors. So you mix it in the first two layers and you let it dry in between each layer. This salt wash comes with excellent instructions. When you order it, I ordered it off of their website. You can get it on Amazon, it's about the same price. Now I'm taking the sage green, but the final coat you don't mix the salt wash in. And I'm just brushing it over the top and I really decide that this is not the color uh, that I want. It's a little too light for what I want because I'm gonna put an image on there. There's the image. And I did not get on camera that I used Moss Green by Waverly. And I did a coat of Moss Green on top. And then I have this image. I got these from, I can't remember where I got these from. I wanna say Amazon. And I just wet the edges and I am going to rip. Now, usually I'll use my little ruler to keep me from ripping into the image too much, but it wasn't working and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't just rip this. It just wasn't really ripping. And I kept trying to wet it and rip it some more. And it just, I don't know, it just wasn't ripping really good. Until I got to the top, uh, it, it, it ripped right up. So it had something to do with the way that the uh, paper was made that you couldn't rip it down. You could only rip it across. Well, you could, but it didn't rip easily. 
Then I took some Truffle by Waverly and just dry brushed some of it around the edges to make this look worn. Okay, so this is um, kind of an announcement about a presentation that is going to be made. And so I really wanted this to look like a placard, you know, a piece of the wood where the announcement had been made on the wall outside the theater. And so that, that was my goal. Now I tried to sand this by hand, but I don't have a lot of grip in my hands anymore. And so I ended up taking it outside and using my electric orbital sander and look at that. Oh, I love how that turned out. It was so easy. Um, I did put Mod Podge on that piece of paper. Then I realized I had to sand it first, sand my wood first. And then I had to put more Mod Podge on. Now I'm just going to put Mod Podge on there. I'm not using the iron on method because I don't really care if there's any wrinkles in this because I want it to look old and aged. Hindsight, I would have put this down a little bit further. I really didn't know what direction I was going. I really wanted to leave those holes. They were not centered and that bothered me. I tried a few things with those holes, but because they weren't centered, it bothered me. So I decided to just put florals. I really wanted those holes because I felt like it helped make it look authentic and like it was old and that it really had come off the wall, but I just, I just couldn't do it. It drove me nuts that they weren't centered. So I'm just going to use these little eucalyptus leaves and these little pink florals that I got in a, uh, they were in a mix with some uh, pennies and they were just the little flowers that were extra in there. And I'm just going to keep picking and poking until I like how they look because that's how I do it. And you do it how you, how you like it. You might not like florals at all. You might want to put a big bow up there. You might not want to put anything. Those, if you had uneven holes, you might not even, that might not even bother you. But if you just have a regular plank of wood, you could use a Dollar Tree sign um, to do something like this. You could just get a piece of scrap wood. I'm going to be doing this technique on lots of scrap wood. So look for this in upcoming, me to be using this salt washing, upcoming videos because I absolutely love this look. Now I'm going to get some, I just, I felt like it needed a little more dimension. So uh, I don't even know where I got these little pieces of greenery, but I wish I knew because I really like them. And this was the only little bunch of them I had. So I just poked some of those in there. Now I'm going to put a hanger on the back. I've got this uh, thicker piece of jute rope. And I'm just going to glue it down and then I'm going to take some of that uh, drop cloth canvas, canvas drop cloth, <laughs> can't even say my words tonight, and I'm going to glue it on just to get just a little extra added support and a little extra finished look. And glue that down and press that hot glue into that fabric so that it's going to adhere and not go anywhere. And we don't want this thing falling off the wall. And causing a loud bang and there it is all finished let me know what you think about this I absolutely love it okay next technique and I got this from Sammy too she is always using this amazing casting resin and it's the quick I ordered the wrong one first and then I had to order this one there's two parts you e mix it equally and you don't have to stir it very long the first time I start it way too long and so I start pouring it in these little molds and I got these molds on Amazon and I will link them in the description box I'll link that this uh, resin in the description box as well I got this too full so I thought I would just smear it over to the other <laughs> mold wrong just move on Kendra because that resin over there in that cup that I set down is setting up it's setting up while I'm trying to do this and so see how it's already starting to turn a little bit so by the time I get a few poured look it's getting really thick and it's not even okay so now I can't even pour it out of the cup look 
it's already setting up. That's how fast this stuff sets up. So I mixed up a new batch and poured them. And yeah, it sets up in like 10 minutes. And then it takes maybe an hour or so to actually cure completely. But you can pop them out. And then I had all these little, you know, this was my first time. And so I had all these little edges on them that I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and just clean that up. And it cleaned up really easy. Um, look, it just slices right off. And it was not a problem to do that. And they turned out really cute. So I'm going to use one of those on this project. I'm going to use, um, I think this was the DIY crinoline in the color crinoline. And then I'm going to just put a little whitewash on it. And then I'm using the DIY dark wax. And I'm just going to give this a little dimension and make it look a little aged. I'm going to also use that on the little keyhole. What do you call that? Little keyhole. Yeah. It almost looks like a cameo, too. And I kind of went with that wood grain. So this little piece of wood was, I was cutting um, a chunk of wood to even it up. It was, this was some of that I got out of that dumpster dive I posted last week. And I was just evening up a chunk of wood. And I, this was the little piece that came off. So this was a piece of scrap. And these are some stickers that I got from, I want to say I got these from Timu. I'm not real sure where I got them from. I can't even remember where I get stuff from anymore. It's old brain. But they are so pretty and they stick right, they almost feel like a, a rub on transfer when you get done with them. And then this little uh, lacy ribbon came from Dollar Tree. I absolutely love it. It's a soft cotton. And then it was a little too wide, so I'm just going to fold it in half. And I'm not even going to take it off. I'm just going to roll that down and fold it in half. And voila! There we go. And I want to put it over kind of to one side. And then I have a little brass key. I got these on Amazon. And I will try to link them in the description box if I don't forget. And I'm just going to take a little piece of embroidery floss and... I tried to kind of um, pick a color that would kind of match in case it showed. And I'm going to tie this right in the center of that little knot so it kind of hangs down there. And then tie that knot back really nice and tight. And then there it is, all finished. You could put a magnet on the back, you could put a little hanger. It would be cute on a tear tray. It is just adorable. Very shabby chic. It could just be Victorian country. It could be whatever you want it to be. You could just make it up. Make up a name if you want to like I did. Okay, next was inspired. All this was inspired by Sammy. Um, the IOD stamps. I finally got some IOD stamps. And you have to kind of sand off the finish when you first get them. And it's like priming them and then I'm using some black ink I didn't even show you that I painted that little house I got from Dollar General how did I skip that part oh boy well I just had that little house from Dollar General and I just painted it white it was cute as it was it had a little beaded garland at the up top I thought I recorded that maybe I just didn't include it when I was editing Oh goodness. Okay, so I'm trying to pick beads out of my bead collection and trying to find the right size I think will look cute up there. And then I chose these a little bit smaller beads. And I'm going to paint them black because I have black and white on the house. But also, my kitchen is done in strawberries. It's decorated in strawberries. has been since 1985. 1985 and I have a video that I did a strawberry tear tray and I will link that in the description box below and you can go and watch that and you can get a tour of my kitchen and so my cabinets are black so I went ahead and went with black for this one so and you can see I'm just doing a little distressing with some dry 
brush with black paint around the edges and then I just sanded it a little bit wiping it off with my little uh, scrap of a t-shirt and then this is where I got a little wonky so I took a little piece of red it's just some cotton string that I got a couple years ago on clearance at Target and I made myself a little needle with some masking tape and I put these beads on I went back and redid this you're gonna see in the final pictures this is not how I did it see I was smart by pulling the beads down in the first place and then I poked them back up there and I'm gonna make a little tassel I'm gonna wrap this around that cardboard really 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 fast a bunch of times I'm gonna cut it off at the bottom and then nope I'm gonna put this through there so I have the tassel at the bottom which wasn't a bad idea except that I needed to leave some space at the top of the beads because the beads stuck straight out they wouldn't hang down so I ended up taking it off using the same tassel but I ended up taking it off and making a longer string now I always put a little drop of um, super glue in there when I use string to do my tassel so they don't come undone and then you just put a little string right below the top of that and tie a little knot in there and I'll super glue that as well well I'm gonna use my tweezers because I told you I don't have a lot of grip in my hands and my fingers anymore I'm about getting a little bit of arthritis or something but I am not gonna stop crafting no 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 it's my passion and here I go trimming it all up and then I'm going to pull that all down I'm gonna cut the ends and then I'm gonna smooth it all out and then I'm gonna give it a little haircut because that's what I do hmm <laughs> literally and you're gonna see here see how I made it I'm pointing to the screen can y'all see me pointing to the screen to show you that I made that a little bit longer <laughs> okay last DIY I'm making this for my cousin and her fav this is her favorite color is ochre and so I had to mix paints because I didn't have any of that color we're gonna use the salt wash again so now I'm using crinoline and I'm gonna mix some of the salt wash powder in there equal parts I think I got this a little bit thick maybe but I like it I like how the texture came out um, oh I was gonna say something and I lost my train of thought but it's okay it'll come back to me um, so yeah just mix it up really good and then apply it it was a little bit thick apply it with a chippy brush or whatever kind of brush but you want to dab it so chippy brushes work really good yeah it was a little bit thick I should have not added so much of the salt wash but it like I told you earlier it comes with really good instructions um, so it's it's pretty um, fail proof foolproof fail proof whichever you however you say it so then when that was completely dry I went in with this moss green I did all the edges and the front the back I'm gonna do with the final coat now this has the salt wash in it too this is moss green by Waverly these are the colors that my cousin picked out now everything is completely dry and you do not put salt wash in your top coat and you, I'm just gonna paint it on I'm not dabbing it I'm painting it and I'm not doing like a solid um, you know full coverage coat I'm just kind of slapping it on there and I'm gonna do the front and the sides oh yeah earlier what I was gonna say was I am going to give the back one coat of this ochre color I'm not gonna do the back with all of those layers okay then I went outside and sanded with my orbital sander with 220 grit sandpaper and this is what it looks like now I'm gonna use another one of those IOD stamps that came in that collection and I'm going to put the, the black ink on it and you want to be careful not to get that ink on that little edge 
around there. I don't know what that's called, but that little edge around there. And I just used a baby wipe to wipe it off if I did. And then, see, just clean it up. And then my cousin said she wanted it down in the right corner and she wanted some negative space up there. So I put it down in the right bottom corner. And oh, look at that cute little rooster. And you just wash these stamps with um, hot soapy, you know, soapy water and dry them real good. And then I thought I got this on camera too, but I didn't. I had this. This actually came out of a floral arrangement. And I just um, fit it around there and then stapled it. You can see there with my staple gun, I stapled it to the back. And now I'm just going to wrap some twine around the top a few times till I think it looks cute and get all that string out of the way. Okay. I think it looks a little bit like an adobe house that's been weathered. I love it. It's just so amazing the different colors you can use to make it like the other colors I used looked totally different. And then I just made this big fluffy bow out of some twine. And if she doesn't like this, she can pull it off. But I think this turned out really cute. Then I'm just going to burn off the hairs with my, yeah, lighter. I'm going to finish off the back with a piece of that drop cloth canvas. If you've been around any time on my channel, you know that I use this a lot. And we're just going to finish the back off so, you know, that wire doesn't scratch anything and it just looks nicer. So I'm going to cut it to fit the back and then we're going to glue it down. So be sure and leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know which one of these that you liked the best. And would you try any of these? Would you try the salt wash? And do you have any IOD stamps? Would you like to get some? It's an investment. They're a little bit pricey, but totally worth it. I absolutely love them. Um, I love how these projects turned out today. I cannot wait to use these techniques again on more projects. Let me know which was your favorite. And did you like the color choices? Um, yeah, just leave me a comment. I love to read your comments. I love to interact with you. Um, I would love for you to send pictures when you create things. I would love to see what you create. You get to see what I create. I would love to see what you create. And um, that's how we get to know each other. And I do appreciate you watching. Um, be sure to give this a thumbs up. Um, yeah, I'm making that flat on the bottom so it will sit flat. I just sort of pressed that little wire down. It's really thin. And you might want to be careful where you sit it if you do that so it doesn't scratch the surface. I think you can, they have had that kind of chicken wire stuff at Dollar Tree before. My Dollar Tree never had it. You can get it at the hobby stores, Hobby Lobby or Michael's. Uh, this was just came in a floral arrangement. It was, you know, just in my junk pile. Now I'm just going to staple this down on the back because this is a thick solid wood piece. And I don't want it to go anywhere. And I put those little knots and I'm going to staple on top of it and below it. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue over it. Just for extra. Because I'm extra. Okay. This is the end of the video. This is the last DIY. And I thank you so much for watching, friends. And I want you to remember to be still and know that He is God.